Welcome to our summary on mutations. So when we're referring to a mutation, what we're actually referring to is a change in the base sequence in the DNA. So if you ever get asked, what is a mutation? That's the phrasing to use, a change in the base sequence in the DNA. It's not something that happens to turtles in sewers, and it's not something that happens to humans overnight to give us amazing powers, unfortunately. It's something rather more mundane. So when we're thinking about when these mutations can occur, the answer is any time. So sometimes when your DNA is replicating, it just occurs as an error in your DNA replication. But your chance of a mutation will increase if you're exposed to doses of ionizing radiation. And one of the best examples of that is ultraviolet or UV. Or if you're exposed to certain chemicals, things like benzene and ethanol, for example. Now, what we actually see as a result of these mutations is that we can get genetic variation. So what we actually find is that when that mutation has taken place within the DNA, it's actually created a different version of an allele. So that then leads to greater variation within a population. Now, what we find is that if these mutations occur, then there could be three potential outcomes. The first one is that there's no effect on the phenotype whatsoever. The second is that it can have an influence on it, or the third one is it can actually determine the phenotype, and that's the one that leads to variation within a species. So when we're thinking about these mutations, then what we find is that they fall into three categories. You've got the harmful mutations, the beneficial mutations, and then ones we refer to as neutral mutations, so the ones that have neither harm nor benefit. So if we consider some of these examples, if we look at harmful mutations, first of all, then the most common harmful mutation we get is the one that leads to cancer. So what we find in cancer is that body cells are actually growing and dividing in an uncontrolled manner. Other harmful mutations that we could get could cause abnormal channel proteins. Now, the channel proteins are the ones that actually go across the cell membrane that allow different things to move from the inside of the cell to the outside. And if that actual channel protein isn't the normal shape, this process won't take place. And an example of where that occurs is in cystic fibrosis, where you get that really thick, sticky mucus that builds up because that protein channel isn't right. And therefore, we won't move the right ions. And the last harmful mutation that we can have is one that we see in sickle cell anemia, which is where your red blood cells actually have a different shape. So they're shaped like a sickle, so kind of like the crescent moon. And that's all down to the different protein that's being made in those red blood cells. If we consider some neutral mutations, so these are the ones that have no benefit nor harm to us, things like rolling your tongue or if your earlobes are free or attached, it's not going to make any difference to your ability to survive, and it's certainly not going to have any harmful impact on your life. The last category, those beneficial mutations, one of the most common one that's not really beneficial to us as humans, but is certainly beneficial to the bacteria, is the development of antibiotic resistance. So that means that if you've got a bacterial infection, antibiotics won't necessarily kill it because it may be resistant to that particular antibiotic couple of other ones for humans there so we had a mutation in a gene called FOXP2 and that actually gave us our speech and the mutation in skin color that actually allowed us to live in all the different regions around this planet safely so if we look at this in a little bit more detail when we consider the structure of DNA not every single section of that DNA molecule actually codes for proteins what we actually have are that the coding sections, which are the genes, are being separated by non-coding DNA, which you can see in the diagram there. You don't have to know the names in that diagram at all. You just need to know the fact that the DNA has coding sections, the genes, and then they're separated by non-coding DNA. So when we actually get a mutation taking place in a gene, then what we will find is that the DNA bases could have three effects. First one is we could change a DNA base. Second one, we could add a base or we could delete a base. So if we consider what happens when we just change a base, we've got the original sequence in our DNA on the first line. 
and then you can see in the second line we've swapped that t for a g so what we actually find is if we think back to the work we did in b1 on how we use the dna to make proteins then it's read in sequences of three bases those triplet codons so what we can see there that first little sequence of three that first triplet which was ata in our original dna has now become aga and this can actually lead to a different amino acid joining into our chain so the little sequences remember tell us what amino acid joins so by changing one of those letters within that code we can change which amino acid will join in the second example of a mutation we can add a base so again we start with the same dna sequence but this time we've added a second t in so what happens as a result of adding a base is that first little triplet has changed again from ata to att but unlike where we just swapped a base around this time it's got an impact on the rest of that chain as well because it's actually shifted everything out of place so what we find is not only will it change the code for the first amino acid but potentially for every amino acid that then follows it so this can have much greater effects than just swapping a single base the third example we've got is where we delete a base and in this case all i've done is i've taken out that letter t so what this has done is it's changed the first triplet and all of the little triplet sequences that then come after it because it's all been shifted along so that means the first amino acid will be different and every amino acid that comes after it in the chain could be different as well so this again can have far-reaching consequences for the shape of that protein so when we actually change the sequence of amino acids in our protein then the way that protein folds up to make its three-dimensional shape could be changed so that means that we could get a completely different shape to our protein or we could get a completely different protein being made altogether so we can get proteins being made in the wrong place in the body now this has a really strong link back to the work we did in b1 on enzymes transcription and translation so make sure that when it comes to your exams that you do go over that as well before that second paper just because it could very well have that prior knowledge linked into it now the other effects that we can see is that just before each gene in our dna sequence we've actually got something called a start codon now this is a little sequence of three bases once more that actually tells the whole process start here so if we got a mutation in that start codon it could actually prevent the entire gene from being transcribed so that means we won't make that protein at all so just bear in mind it's not just changes within the gene that can cause problems if we get a mutation within that non-coding region we may not express the protein at all but as i say do look back because obviously changes to protein shape has a perfect link into our enzymes because of their active site so recap enzymes recap transcription and translation from b1 before your b5 exam otherwise you could come unstuck because you've forgotten that information